I should explain that we have not increased our travellers coming into Singapore. It's not because there are more travel travellers coming to Singapore. The large volume of the people coming into Singapore remain construction workers. They are coming to do jobs for us because the contractors need workers and a good number of them have left Singapore so they need to replace uh, the people who have left with new workers. And number two, they are foreign domestic help who are doing caregiving work for Singaporeans. Why have the numbers gone up? It's simply because the prevalence rate, the incidence rate of the disease is much higher now. The virus is raging in countries everywhere. We require them to administer, be administered with a pre-departure test 72 hours before they come in in order to screen off those who are already infected. When these travellers come into Singapore, we put them on a stay-home notice requirement so that we isolate them from the community. Even as we have a continued flow of people coming in, which is needed for Singapore's economy and society to function, we do all that is necessary to take the necessary precautions and safeguards and isolate these cases from seeping through our community. I, it's certainly not about deciding by gut, right? I, I don't trust my own gut. So um, I, I, I have obviously gut reactions to anything that comes up, but in decision making, you know, in a situation like this, it is not just based on instincts. You've got to look at data, you've got to look at evidence. It's a constant daily affair, tracking these developments, getting inputs from a whole range of different people, sensing, as you said just now, also the public mood, public sentiments. Not so much that public sentiments would shape or in, would, would impact on the policies per se, because the policies, first and foremost, have to be determined by what's right from a public health point of view. But to some extent, the implementation of the policies do depend on the public acceptance of these measures. And, and that's a judgment. If, if the sense is the public is not prepared to accept the measures, we can talk about having new measures, but if the compliance rate is very low, then it's not going to be effective. So we have to think through a whole gamut of different issues before we develop any new measures. I'm wary about you know, talking about what I want to do because when my mother, who's been a teacher for many, many years, used to come back from teaching and then she would lament, oh, we have a new minister and he's got this new slogan for the schools. Oh, we've got a new perm set and he's got this new program in mind. <laughs> and, and I can understand, you know, it's, things keep changing and they don't feel like they're part of um, the solution, but it's something hoisted on them. So, my own, coming from my background and growing up the way I did, I, I hesitate a bit to say this is my priority. I think it should be what educators want. And all educators want to uplift every child and ensure that they are able to achieve their full potential. And that's what we will want to do too, together with our educators in every school, make sure that we uplift every child.